Welcome back to Flashpoint. Former Governor Pat McCrory weighing in on the upcoming presidential race. Why he says he wants to make sure neither President Biden or Mr. Trump get a second term. Looking at the 2024 race for presidency, uh, the president once again in court this week um, on new federal charges. Do you think that just fuels his popularity within some in the Republican Party? Yeah, within some of the base, it'll fuel his popularity. And regardless whether it's legal or not, I think what both Biden and Trump did was reckless. And anyone in the private sector who did such a thing uh, would be fired immediately. You don't carry documents outside your office in the private or public sector. And uh, we got to quit wearing the jerseys. When the Democrats do it, the Democrats give them a pass. When the Republicans do it, the Republicans give our people a pass. Quit giving a pass because they happen to be wearing our jersey. We need to be more consistent in our viewpoints as opposed to hypocritical. Well, but, but to that point, I mean, Vice President Pence w was just sort of uh, uh, not found to do anything wrong in his case because it was clear that he had some documents but was not aware of them. A and so far, the Biden case is continues to be under investigation about whether he knew that. I, I feel like the President Trump's case is quite different uh, uh, based on what we know, that investigators had warned him several times, hey, you've got documents, then we need them. And it appears, according to the special counsel, that he held those back from those investigators. I don't know what's, I don't know the details because we aren't given the details on Pence and what documents he took and was it purely accidental. Even if it was ac accidental, it was reckless, but the amount of documents that both uh, Biden did when he was a senator and vice president and that President Trump did is reckless. I mean, just reckless. We don't know it much more than that. And by the way, not cooperating is reckless, too. And that might be a little more of what Trump did. But either way, if you break the law and then decide to cooperate because uh, someone saw it, you're still liable for that activity. Uh, but uh, so we'll let the court system work. And I, the court system needs to, be, needs to be consistent with all people they're dealing with. I just hate to see the division. And what I don't want is violence. Um, you know, we have the left who disagree with certain items and they turn to the streets of Charlotte and break windows and attack our police and police station. Then we have Republicans who disagree with election results and attack our police officers on the Capitol Hill. I, I just, I just, we've got to stay strong and say we're against any anarchy. Uh, I, I'm a, I believe in the Constitution, and that includes peaceful assembly, and peaceful assembly doesn't include attacking our police officers or destroying property. Knowing that you don't support President Trump or President Biden, is there a Republican who, who is in the race right now that you do like? Yeah, in fact, most of them. Most of them, I know them. Uh, there, there are some good governors that are running. I'm, I'm, they'd be great presidents in my book, um, but they don't seem to be making much traction. So, yeah, I, I'm, I, I, I don't want us to have to have a third ballot. And neither do my uh, more moderate liberal friends, uh, Ben Chavis and, and Senator Lieberman. They would prefer uh, it, the two parties wake up. But if they don't, um, and 60% of the people still disagree with the two candidates and feel like they have to hold their nose in order to vote, we got a problem. And uh, a company that would do the same thing with their products, where most people don't like their product, would be out of business. And I think it's up to the two parties to uh, kind of wake up. And I hope my Republican Party wakes up. They, they didn't do a good job at the convention in uh, getting the signal, though. What, what if the no labels folks came to you and said, you know what, you were the governor of a purple state. Why not put you on the ticket? <laughs> uh, that's not going to happen. I'm, I'm going to hopefully be a part of that process. Um, I, I've moved. I'm, I'm going to be a, a, I'm using my wisdom as a former mayor, governor and Senate candidate and a city council member, by the way. I'm proud of that to try to give a perspective that's not being given. And as I often say on the radio, I've played the game, I've been played by the game, now I'm here to tell you the game and what's wrong with it, and we need to prove upon it. And um, I have nothing to hold me back on that. That's, that's what a person of my age should do at this point in time, frankly, of any ages. And I've been pretty frank on both sides, but uh, the labeling is killing us in politics and it is being done by the media you know you're a conservative you're a liberal you're a rhino you're a right winger um it's got to stop because most people take each issue individually and decide upon it and see the facts and make their decision then move on to the next issue so are you saying you're not going to ever run for office again 
I've said that before. Yeah, I, I, I've made that commitment to my family. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can understand uh, that. If I change, you'll be the last to know. <laughs> yeah, I, well, listen, after uh, several decades of doing listen, the public I, life listen, thing. I went through, I got, I got, you know, I got attacked even after I came home to Charlotte, you know, in my car. And, uh, we've been threatened and, uh, you know, so it's this, this, this crap's got to stop regarding violent rhetoric uh, and violent actions. I, I've been a part of it and I've been kind of attacked by both the left and the right um, as we describe them. Um, and it's wrong. That's not the way our nation should act. As far as Republicans running for governor, um, you supporting any of them, all of them, none of them? I have not uh, stated where I feel. I, I do feel we have uh, I, I, Dale Falwell worked for me, and he's a doer. He's a worker. Mark Walker is probably the most social conservative person running, true social conservative. I ran against him for the Senate, and then uh, Mark Robinson. He's um, he's a great speaker. <laughs> he tells people what they want to hear, not necessarily what you need to hear. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Finally, you mentioned the fact that you were a city council member, you're mayor of Charlotte, uh, many terms over. Do you look at Charlotte sometime and, and the city and then how it's run and knowing that you are conservative, even though you don't like the label, uh, even though you're a Republican, even though you don't like the label? Um, do you see I don't mind the labels. It's the branding of people, uh, the labels. But the city of Charlotte, I'm proud of. I think we did the right things. I'm very discouraged about the crime and the lack of attention being directed toward crime by our current elected officials and the allowing people to sleep on the streets. And we're, we need to reestablish some of the programs that I did as mayor, like Target 100 and targeting the people that we're arresting over and over again and get them prosecuted. And we're not doing that. We're making some of the same mistakes that we see with the more uh, what they call progressive cities of letting the criminals go into our stores and walk out with stuff, which I just saw the other day at my drugstore and a supermarket where people just walked in. Mayor Pat, I guess you'll always be Mayor Pat around these parts, even though you went on to be a governor and as well as a I'm Senate candidate. I'm proud of that. No problem. All right, I'm Mayor proud Pat, of that. Welcome back to Flash. As long as you don't put an adjective on. before it. <laughs> we'll do. We'll do. All right. Take care. Thanks for coming back on. We appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye. All right. More Flashpoint after this.